بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على المين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم uh, In last lecture before the vacation we started the pharmacology of the autonomic nervous system and first we revise uh, we revise the physiology of the autonomic nervous system uh, both parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system uh, then we discuss the cholinergic transmission that occur uh, on the cholinergic neurons the neurons that secrete stylcholine as a neurotransmitter at the nerve terminal and we, we, we mentioned that these cholinergic neurons uh, are found both in preganglionic fibers of both sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and also occur in the both ganglionic fibers of the parasympathetic nervous system uh, also they are occur in the both ganglionic fibers of the sympathetic nervous system that terminating or innervating the sweet glands and uh, also the cholinergic neurons we mentioned that uh, occur uh, in the neurons that innervate this, the, the skeletal muscles that belong to the somatic, uh, somatic nervous system and last the cholinergic neuron also occur in the central nervous system regarding the cholinergic transmission we first uh, talk about the synthesis of the acetylcholine and we mentioned that acetylcholine is synthesized from choline and acetyl-CoA uh, by the reaction that catalyzed by the enzyme choline acetyltransferase cat uh, and we mentioned that choline is obtained from the liver or from the diet while style coa is in the from the mitochondria uh, of the neurons and the enzyme cat uh, is synthesized by the ribosomes of the cell of the cell body of the neurons and all of these occur in the cholinergic neurons and we talk about the drugs that can impair can lead to the impairment of the acetylcholine senses and we divide these drugs into two categories direct cat inhibitors such as promo style coa and chloro style coa and indirect inhibitors uh, such as uh, the drugs that inhibit the choline transporter such as the hemicholine then we talk about the uh, stylcholine storage and we mentioned that the uh, visa mycol can interfere with the accumulation or the packaging of stylcholine so that can interfere with the stylcholine storage so this visa mycol as a drug can lead to the inhibition of the cholinergic transmission because it interferes with the storage of the stylcholine uh, then we talk about the, the release of the stylcholine and uh, at the, uh, like all other neurotransmitters stylcholine is released when there is an action potential came to the nerve terminal lead to the depolarization uh, among the nerve terminal and this is triggered the calcium and which lead to the secretion or release of stylcholine through the exocytosis and we mentioned the drugs that can affect stylcholine release we mentioned the botulinum toxin can inhibit cycloline or can block a cycloline release also morphine and the catecholamines and bangaro toxins also beta bangaro toxin also can inhibit the cycloline uh, release uh, then uh, while the cycloline release can it can be stimulated by a plaque with the spider lateral toxin lateral toxin can stimulate the cycloline release after the release cycloline uh, released from the nerve terminal can exert its uh, action on its receptors muscarinic or nicotinic receptors uh, then the, its action can be terminated by the hydrolysis by the enzyme called choline esterase uh, enzyme and there are two types of uh, these enzymes, pseudocholine sterase and trucholine sterase. Trucholine sterase occur uh, on the neurons, while the pseudocholine sterase occur, uh, occur in the plasma. And last, we talk about the stylcholine receptors, and we mentioned that these receptors are of two types muscarinic receptors, and muscarinic receptors have five subtypes. M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5, 
M1, M3, M5 are excitatory receptors, while M2 and M4 inhibitory uh, receptors. Uh, the inhibitory receptors act through inhibition of the adenylate cyclase so that it leads to the decrease in uh, style uh, in uh, cyclic AMB as a second messenger while the excitatory one can stimulate the phospholipase C so that can lead to increase in installed triphosphate and diacylicerol. Uh, the second types of the um, uh, style coin receptors uh, are the nicotinic receptors and also nicotinic receptors are or of two types in N types that occur in autonomic ganglia and the in M type which occur uh, in the neuromuscular junction. Uh, this is uh, brief. Uh, the last lecture we talk regarding the uh, the cholinergic transmission. So that inshallah in this uh, lecture we'll uh, discuss the cholinergic agonist. Cholinergic agonist, the drugs act as agonists like stylcholine on an stylcholine receptors, muscarinic receptors, or nicotinic receptors. The cholinergic agonist also can be called cholinomimetic. Cholinomimetics because they mimic, they mimic the stylcholine action, so they're also called cholinomimetics. Or also they can be termed uh, as parasympathomimetic because cyclone is the uh, is the main neurotransmitter for the parasympathetic nervous system at the post ganglionic neurons which have, uh, which innervate the affected organs here as we mentioned previously either smooth muscle or glands or cardiac muscles so inshallah in this lecture we will talk about the cholinergic agonist uh, their pharmacological action, pharmacodynamic effects, their uh, clinical uses, and their adverse effects, and their contra uh, indication. Stylcholine receptor stimulant can be divided to directly acting agent. These drugs act through pro uh, producing direct effect, direct activation of the muscarinic receptor, just like stylcholine on its receptor either muscarinic or nicotinic receptors or indirectly acting agent this uh, type of drugs inhibit the enzyme uh, stylcholine esterase so this can lead to the increase in the level of indigenous stylcholine by inhibiting the degradation of the uh, stylcholine so this indirectly can lead to increase uh, in the level of stylcholine, so they are called indirectly acting uh, agent. Directly acting choline receptor stimulants include stylcholine, which uh, can act on both muscarinic and nicotinic receptor, while methacholine, carbacol, bethanicol, pilocarbin is mainly are uh, muscarinic stimulants, and the last two drugs, nicotine and lobulin, are a nicotine uh, re a nicotinic receptor stimulant can activate the nicotinic uh, receptors. Uh, stylcholine is not useful therapeutically. Why? This is because of its multiplicity of actions, have multiple actions uh, because it can rapidly activate the muscarinic and nicotinic receptor, le leading to a wide spread of actions. Uh, this is beside of its rapid inactivation by the enzymes, choline esterase enzyme through an pseudocholine esterase, so that is unstable. Uh, so we will not find that stylcholine occur okay, at inject, injection for the clinical uses, although we can find adrenaline, dopamine, noradrenaline, and other uh, uh, mediators or other uh, indigenous uh, neurotransmitters. The pharmacodynamic effects of muscarinic uh, stimulants. The pharmacological action that result from the activation of the muscarinic receptors uh, upon the different system. Uh, first, on the eye. On the eye, you'll find the muscarinic receptors into two locations. The first one, on the constrictor pupillae muscle of the iris. Constrictor pupillae muscle of the iris is also called the circular muscles and the activation of this type of receptors will lead to the contraction of this uh, pupillae muscle 
like the sacral muscle and this contraction will lead to meiosis 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 and it's very important to control the light intensity that for the eye uh, so that we will find uh, the meiosis is produced by the parasympathetic nervous system among the stimulation of the muscarinic receptors that occur in the iris constrictor pupillae muscle. Also, we'll find muscarinic receptors on the ciliary muscle, the ciliary muscle that control the ciliary body. And also, this is very important for the accommodation for near vision. As we know that the parasympathetic nervous system is a system for rest and digest. Rest and digest. The rest involve accommodation for accommodation of the uh, of the vision for near uh, vision. Uh, this is mediated by the parasympathetic nervous system. We'll see this how can this produce by the activation of muscarinic uh, receptors. Also these uh, two type of receptor muscarinic receptors are very important for to control the intraocular pressure the intra, as, as you know the the, uh, the eye uh, the intraocular pressure is very important to control the pressure of the eye uh, the aqueous humor the aqueous humor which control the intraocular pressure and the increase in the intraocular pressure can lead to a disease called glaucoma Glaucoma increase the in intraocular pressure that more than 15 millimeter mercury, and if if not treated, glaucoma can lead to retinal detachment, and this can lead to blindness. So it's very important to be uh, treated. I will also discuss how this can be controlled by the parasympathetic uh, nervous system and exactly by the muscarinic stimulant, the colinum mimetic drugs that uh, activate the muscarinic uh, receptors. So the effects of the parasympathetic nervous system or the effects of a muscarinic stimulants, the pharmacodynamic effects, the pharmacological effects that result from an activation of the muscarinic receptor in the eye uh, can be uh, or can result in meiosis, the contraction of the constrictor pupillae muscle lead to meiosis and the uh, accommodation for near vision also mediated by the uh, muscarinic stimulants uh, among the, uh, the muscarinic receptors that occur in the ciliary uh, muscle and last uh, the muscarinic activation of the muscarinic receptors in the eye can lead to the decrease in, intra in, in the intraocular pressure by both type of receptors we mean that receptor occur in the circular muscle and the receptors that occur in the ciliary muscle. We'll see this in the coming uh, slide. Uh, first, this is the uh, iris, and this is the constrictor pupillae muscle, the constrictor pupillae uh, muscle, uh, in which we find uh, the muscarinic uh, receptor. So the activation of this receptor can lead to the contraction of these muscles. The contraction of these muscles, this is the iris, and as you know, the iris is characterized by different colors among different people. You'll find this uh, sometimes blue, purple, uh, uh, brown, whatever. Uh, the contraction of this muscle will lead to thinning of the iris thinning of the iris this is iris as you know we will find this uh, among the eye uh, like this this is also the iris this is the iris the contraction of this muscle will lead to increase in the length increase in the length and decrease the a sickness of the iris increase in length contraction of this type of muscle will lead to increase in length and decrease in the thickness increase in the length increase in the length will be increased here and also increase this and oh it is circular because it's circular so the increase will decrease and this is a pupil this is a pupil 
so decrease increase here and increase in here will decrease the pupil size and decrease in the pupil size this is what is called meiosis meiosis and again again it's meiosis is mydiasis this is meiosis which is produced by the activation of muscarinic receptor that occur in the circular muscle here also we have another, a second uh, a third picture this is a contraction of the pupillae constrictor muscle or circular muscle will lead to the meiosis well, and this occur in case of increased fear a light intensity a light intensity زيادة شدة الإضاءة يعني إذا أنت موجود في حجرة في كلاس مظلم خريطة الشارع أو خريطة خارج القاعة شدة الإضاءة أكثر automatically your brain will stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system which will release a stylcholine which will act on a constricted pupillary muscle leading to uh, meiosis to decrease uh, the pupil size so to decrease the light that uh, uh, entering the through the, uh, the eye pupil okay this is the fairest uh, uh, effect the who are meiosis that result from the activation of a muscarinic receptor that occur in an iris constrictor pupillae muscle or a circular muscle. The second effect uh, is the accommodation for near vision. How the parasympathetic nervous system can accommodate for near vision? يخليك البصر ويخليك الرؤية أو البصر ملائم للرؤية القريبة. Okay, this occur through the activation. Of the muscarinic receptor that occur in a ciliary muscle. This is a ciliary muscle, the ciliary muscle, and this is a ciliary body. The activation of the ciliary muscle will lead to the contraction of the ciliary or the ciliary muscle. The activation of muscarinic receptor will lead to the contraction of the ciliary muscle. And the activate and the contraction of, of these ciliary muscles will lead to Pulling the ciliary body is the ciliary body inward and outward in the anterior chamber of the eye. In this picture, this is a, a, a this is a anterior chamber of the eye and this is a posterior chamber of the eye. This movement of the ciliary body inward and outward due to the contraction of the ciliary muscle from physical viewpoint will lead to the decrease in the surface tension that occur on the suspensory ligaments suspensory ligaments للخيوط الشادة العادسة دي اسمها suspensory ligaments من ناحية فيزيائية الحركة بتاعت الciliary body inward and outward in the anterior chamber will lead to the decrease in the surface tension that occur uh, upon the ciliary uh, or the obon, the suspensory ligaments. The decrease in the surface tension, decrease in the decrease with surface tension, will lead to the bulk of the lens. Bulk, يعني العدد العدسة حصل لها انتفاخ. Bulk تتنفخ. تزيد في the size بتاع in both size because it's flexible. The, this is the lens. Uh, the bulk increase. من ناحية physical from a physical viewpoint the increase in the length of the uh, of the in, in, in the length, uh, increase all, of all the result from bulk the bulk of the length will will decrease the focal length of the of this lens البعد البوري بتاع اللينس لما يحصل لها انتفاخ يحصل لها بلك نتيجة للارتخاء النتج من الدكريس في السيرف السنشن الناتج من الحركة بتاعت السيليري مصل او كونها تدفع السيليري بوردي uh, inward and outward في الانتريور تشامبر will lead to the bulk as we mentioned the bulk of the, of the lens and the increase in the bulk and uh, all this increase in the lens bulk from a physical viewpoint من ناحية فيزيائية will decrease the focal lens هيقلل البعد البوري بتاعه and this is will accommodate for near vision ودوك خليها انها هي تكون ملائمة للنير vision إذن this is the second effect result from the activation of muscarinic 
stimulants on the muscanic receptor that occur in the ciliary muscle. The last pharmacological effects or pharmacodynamic effect that result from muscanic stimulation is the decrease in the intraocular pressure. Uh, regarding the intraocular pressure, as we know, the aqueous humor which is a control the pressure, uh, intraocular pressure of the eye. As the blood control uh, blood pressure uh, of the body, we find that the aqueous humor uh, control the intraocular pressure of the eye. As I mentioned, that the normal intraocular pressure of the eye is about 10 to 15 millimeter mercury. The aqueous humor is synthesized from the epithelial cell that cover the ciliary body. We saw the epithelial cell that cover the ciliary body. We have a low drainage. We saw in the anterior chamber. We have a low drainage transfer from the posterior chamber through the canal of Ischle. Through the canal of Ischle. How the muscarinic stimulation can stimulate? أو كان decrease the intraocular pressure will find أو we will talk about this effect first because the aqueous the aqueous humus is drenched by the or through the canal of Schlem and we will find the canal of Schlem occur in the angle between the cornea and the iris the angle زاوية دي بين the cornea والآ iris هي موجود فيها canal of Schlem واللي بيحصل through which بيحصل الدرينج بتاع الاكيوس شومر طيب the first the contraction of this iris pupillae muscle نحنا قلنا ال contraction بتاع بواسطة الكوالينو مايماتيك او الكوالينو استيميلانت او المسكانيك استيميلانت بيخليه هي thin و tall وبالتالي حيقلل من الفولدنج بتاع الاريس فولدنج الثنيات بتاعتها هنا بيخليها بالتالي بيزيد من الانجل بتاعت الكانال اوف شليم وبيساعد في الدرينج بتاع الاكيوس هيومر سو ذات الكولينو مايماتيك دراكس سوتش از البلو كاربين بنلقاها بنستخدمها فور تريتمنت اوف جلوكوما لانها كان فاسيليتيت الدرينج بتاع الاكيوس هيومر وفاسيليتيت الدرينج معناها حتقلل من الانتراكولر بريجر دي ذا فيرست ميكانيزم ذا سيكند ميكانيزم اولسو وي فايند مسكنينج ريسبتر از وي مينشن Uh, in the cell, uh, in the ciliary muscle, so that the contraction of this, as we mentioned, the accommodation with near vision, will lead to the uh, pulling the ciliary body inward and outward the anterior chamber. This movement also enhances the drainage and movement with uh, the ciliary body inward and outward the anterior chamber. Also, can stimulate the flow, can stimulate the flow. Of the aqueous humor, it can also stimulate the drainage of the aqueous humor, so that this can also decrease uh, the intraocular pressure. So that is a very important clinical use of uh, of a muscanic stimulant. We will find the, the the clinical use of uh, for treatment of uh, glaucoma. The pharmacodynamic effects of muscanic stimulants on a cardiovascular system. We will find that the cholinomimetic drugs act on muscarinic receptors on the heart M2 receptors will lead to the slowing and decrease in the cardiac output and this is okay because M2 receptors as we mentioned before are inhibitor receptors act with the decrease in the adenylate cyclase leading to inhibition of the adenylate cyclase leading to the decrease in the cyclic AMB so decrease in the calcium and this is lead to the decrease in the contraction uh, leading to the slowing of the heart and decrease in the force of the contraction and mainly occur this occur, uh, uh, occur uh, on the atrium SA node on the atrium Uh, while the ventricle has spares, يعني ضئيل, spares parasympathetic innervation, this is compared with the uh, atrium. This is a cardiovascular effects uh, on the heart. Also, uh, on the blood vessels, we have M2 receptors uh, can lead to the pulse dilatation. Uh, but mainly, uh, as we know, the blood vessels, uh, we will find uh, the alpha-1 receptors, the uh, 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 agents can activate 
that type of receptors lead to the uh, vasoconstriction. The predominant receptors on the blood vessels are the adrenergic receptors, especially the alpha-1 uh, receptors. Uh, regarding the respiratory system, uh, the pharmacodynamic effects of muscarinic stimulants uh, on the respiratory system, this can lead to the contraction of the muscle, bronchial smooth muscles uh, on the bronchial tree, uh, can lead to bronchoconstriction, also increase in the glandular secretion, uh, the respiratory uh, glands or the respiratory secretions can also be stimulated can by the muscarinic stimulant and these two effects can lead to a symptoms in individuals that suffer from asthma because bronchoconstriction with increased field secretions this can lead to uh, asthma uh, in the patient that suffer from the uh, this uh, disease on the GIT, the pharmacodynamic effects of muscarinic stimulants on the GIT, this can lead to the incre increase in the secretions of the gastric gland, uh, including an FCL secretion, an increase in the motor activity and peristaltic movement of the eye, uh, while the sphincters can be relaxed by the muscarinic stimulants. The overall effect among the GIT, this can lead to increase film movement the GIT and uh, inhibition uh, and the relaxation of the sphincter, so this can promote edification on the GIT. Uh, regarding a genitourinary tract, the muscarinic stimulants can stimulate the muscarinic receptors of the bladder, uh, leading to the detrusal muscle of the bladder. Uh, we will find muscarinic receptor on these muscles. This can lead to the contraction of the bladder a relaxation of the sphincters. Uh, the overall effect is promoting the urine voiding. Uh, while the human uterus is not sensitive to the muscarinic agonist because we will not find muscarinic receptors on the human uterus so that there is no effect uh, of these muscarinic stimulants uh, on the human uh, uterus. Uh, the secretory glands, as we know, the, secre uh, the glands are very sensitive. Uh, we'll find the uh, muscarinic receptors on the glands, uh, sweet glands, lacrimal glands, and nasopharyngeal glands. And this is uh, very sensitive for the uh, action of muscarinic agonists. So this, uh, their secretions, sweat or lac uh, lacrimation, or uh, uh, the increase of the nasopharyngeal, or even the uh, bronchial tree secretions can be stimulated by the muscarinic. Uh, uh, last, the pharmacodynamic effects of uh, muscarinic stimulants on the central nervous system. Uh, regarding the central nervous system, you will find both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors uh, are found, and inshallah, we'll talk about in more details uh, on the next uh, semester uh, when, we, when we will talk about. Uh, or during talking about the pharmacology of the, of the central nervous system. For example, uh, the muscarinic receptors are very important in some of the CNS disorders such as uh, Parkinsonism. Uh, we will find that the anti muscarinic drugs can be used for treatment of Parkinsonism. Also, the nicotine uh, and lobulin, both of these drugs uh, having alerting action, means this is through the nicotinic receptor, not muscarinic receptor. Uh, and we'll find that higher levels of nicotine can cause convulsion and coma due to the excitatory effects of nicotine. And inshallah, we'll talk uh, in this or regarding these uh, effects, inshallah, on the next semester where we talk about the central nervous uh, system. Now, uh, we'll talk about, uh, we have a video here uh, regarding the parasympathetic stimulation. Uh, the carbocol uh, effect uh, on rats. I will send this video uh, with the lecture, inshallah. Uh, these are the clinical uses of directly acting cholinomimetic drugs. Uh, first, glucoma, as we mentioned, we can use uh, bilocarbin, eye drop. 2% and 4% can be used for treatment of glaucoma because it can reduce the intraocular pressure by mechanism we talked about in the previous uh, slide. This is by facilitating, uh, facilitating the outflow, the drainage of the aqueous humor. Uh, 
Also, the cholinomimetic drugs can be used for treatment of post-operative ileus atony and post-operative urinary retention. Example, we will find uh, bethanicol as uh, a drug can be used for treatment of these two disorders, post-operative ileus atony and post-operative urinary retention. And this is the main problem that uh, usually occur after the major abdominal surgery. Major abdominal surgery because can affect uh, nerves, abdominal nerves, enteric uh, neurons, and this can result in uh, urinary retention and can also result in constipation. So to promote the GIT movement, the prestalysis, and to promote the urine voiding, we can use beta nicol which is a uh, selective muscarinic agonist. So it is cholinomimetic drug can be used for this uh, purpose. Also, pilocarbin can be used orally uh, in the form of tablet, 5 to 10 milligram doses. It can be given three times daily for treatment of xerostomia. And xerostomia is an abnormal dryness of the mouse. Uh, in which the salivary gland um, does not uh, produce sufficient salivary secretions, insufficient salivary secretions, uh, uh, result from xerostomia. And uh, xerostomia can be occurred uh, followed uh, the radiation, neck and head, head and neck uh, radiation, in the cancer treatment. Uh, also can be associated with a syndrome called Sujan syndrome. Associated with uh, xerostomia. So, to, to treat this dryness, which results from insufficient salivary secretion, we can use pilocarbin, which can stimulate the muscarinic receptors occur on the salivary gland. And we know that these glands are very sensitive for alcoholinomimetic drugs and will result in by increasing in the secretion of this uh, saliva, uh, salivary. So, can treat this uh, xerostomia. Now we'll talk about the indirectly acting cholinoceptor stimulants, uh, which are called an anticholinesterase. Anticholinesterase because they inhibit the enzyme cholinesterase, so they can stimulate or they can increase the indigenous cycloline levels. So they are called indirectly acting uh, cholinoceptor uh, stimulants because they are not act directly on the receptors. They act by inhibition of the enzyme by inhibiting the enzyme so they can lead to the increase of the endogenous acetylcholine which can stimulate the receptors and this can result in widespread of uh, effects mediated by these drugs uh, actually this group of drugs uh, a very big group of drugs uh, they include uh, drugs which are belong to three categories uh, the first one short acting anticholine series such as hydrophonia and antifolium hydrophonium short acting have duration of action about three minutes uh, so it's uh, effects is of, of a short time and this uh, can be used for for diagnosis of mycenae graphics and inshallah by the end of this of this lecture we'll talk about detail about this uh, disorder or disease mycenae graphics it should use for Diagnosis of Mycenae graphis. Uh, the second group of these drugs uh, having a medium duration of action, they call medium duration anticholinesterase, uh, which we, we find a lot of drugs belong to this group: neostigmine, biridostigmine, bisostigmine, tacrine, donibizil, rivastigmine, and glantamine. Neustigmine, biridostigmine, bisostigmine are used for treatment of mycenae graphis, treatment of mycenae graphis, while tacrin, donibizil, rivastigmine, because they can cross the center uh, blood brain barrier, they are used for Alzheimer, uh, uh, for treatment of Al Al Alzheimer uh, disease. The third group of these drugs uh, are irreversible anticholine stress, irreversible anticholine stress. They bind to the enzyme, leading to the phosphorylation of the enzyme, uh, rendering the enzyme uh, irreversible, uh, made uh, irreversible changing among the enzyme. This is due to the uh, covalent bond or covalent binding by the enzyme. The irreversible anticholine series uh, from synthetic uh, organophosphate compound, actually most of them are uh, in, uh, in the chemistry, this chemical structure of these compounds are organophosphate compounds. They have a capacity to bind covalently, and, and the covalent 
bound uh, is, uh, is not to be reversed, covalent bound to, to the anticoagulant series. The result is a long lasting increase in uh, stycholine at all sites where it is uh, released, stycholine, due to the inhibition uh, or prolonged inhibition of this uh, enzyme. Uh, most of these drugs have non medical uses, uh, they include diflus. Parasion, sarin, diffuse parasion, and malasion, which are used as insecticide. While a sarin, soman, tabon, cyclosarin can be used as chemical weapons. Chemical weapons, uh, also, they are called nerve gases. They are used in uh, chemical as a chemical weapons because they can uh, be inhaled during during a uh, during a uh, during attack. Uh, an arm attack uh, attacked by these uh, chemicals can be inhaled when they are inhaled there is a systemic uh, uh, absorption for this agent and directly they can uh, concentrate it especially on a neuromuscular junction so this can lead to the paralysis of the skeletal muscles and the most serious is the paralysis of the diaphragm diaphragm muscle and the paralysis of the paralysis of the diaphragm muscle will lead to respiratory failure and the death will occur due to the respiratory failure this is in human or even in insects in case of insecticides because the uh, diffuse parasion malasion can be used as insecticide maybe that hasharia uh, the same mechanism is uh, by producing respiratory failure due to the uh, relaxation among uh, occur among the diaphragm uh, muscle Last, we have an equithiobate, and this is the only one that used clinically, and only used uh, an eye drop for treatment of glaucoma. Uh, we can uh, because uh, 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 the use of equithiobate as eye drop, there is not uh, sufficient systemic absorption from the eye because the eye is poorly. Uh, blood supply فبالتالي ما بيحصل absorption له من ال eye فبالتالي بيكون الإفكت هو محصور فقط uh, restricted on the eye can be used as eye drop for treatment of uh, glaucoma uh, the, recover, the recovery of the enzymatic activity of the cholinesterase enzyme after the binding of uh, organophosphate compounds depend on the senses of new enzyme molecules which may take uh, weeks, so the effect is very uh, dangerous among the, uh, especially on the nerve gases or uh, in, in case of an uh, insecticides or in case of a uh, poisoning with these uh, drugs. Toxic effects could be treated with immediate administration of praliduxime and atropine. Praliduxime is called choline uh, cholinesterase reactivator. This substance or this agent or this drug, the praliduxime, uh, act by reactivating, reactivating the enzyme from the organophosphate compound. The organophosphate compound also has a phosphorylation to the enzyme. It has a changing to the enzyme and it has a phosphorylation. The praliduxime has been removed the phosphorylation from the enzyme, so it's called Choline sterase reactivator. The Harley choline sterase enzyme betana in the organ phosphate compound. Shankido who antidote antidote le al irreversible anticholine sterase. We are using it with atropine. The atropine, of course, to block the muscarinic receptor, betali to inhibit or to block the adverse effects that the nadia from the muscarinic activation. كل the effects that can be obtained from the muscarinic activation, which is salivation, lacrimation, the GIT cramp. الurination, edification, كل الإفكس اللي ممكن تحصل نتيجة للمسكنين activation can be blocked by الأتروبين so these uh, combination uh, praliduxime and الأتروبين are used as antidote ودائما بتكون مع الجنود أو العساكر المتوقعين لغارة حربية مستخدم فيها chemical weapon واللي هو عبارة عن organ phosphate compound سطحي عز السعرين أو السومان أو التابون أو غيره the clinical uses of anticholine series drugs that uh, act indirectly through the inhibition of the choline series enzyme. The first clinical use, uh, it, they are used in anesthesia to revert the action of non-deborizing blockers. 
ان انتي بروزنج نيوروموسكولار بلوكن دراجز اللي هم بنستخدمهم في الانيسيزيا ان اوسو بيفور او بري اوبريتيف تو برودوس ماسل ريلاكسيشن سوسي از تيبوكرين ان ان تيبوكرين ان بانكرونيوم ان فيركيرونيوم ذيس ار نانتي بروزنج نيوروموسكولار بلوكن دراجز اكت باي بلوكينج ذا نيكوتينيك ريسبتورز ذات اوكير ان ذا موتور ان بليت exactly the nm type of the whole nn nm type of muscular type of nicotinic receptors occur in the motor end plate in the neuromuscular junction to reverse the action because they are competitively this can be reversed by increasing the concentration of the of the endogenous cycloline and these drugs new stigmine and a visistigmine or pyridistigmine can increase the concentration of endogenous cytokines so this can compete with a with a non-diverging neuromuscular blocking drugs such as the tuberculin and bancuronin because this can their action can be terminated or can be reversed by these drugs actually this can occur in clinical practice when we use uh, for anesthesia or for uh, before a surgery uh, patient Uh, the muscle relaxation is provided by uh, tubuclerin or bancuronium or with the vercuronium uh, and still after uh, the surgery finished and the patient uh, came uh, came to the room uh, still the patient uh, suffer from that in uh, he can't uh, move okay he can't uh, move his uh, legs or his hand due to the muscle relaxation that provided by tubuclerin uh, or vercuronium this can be reversed by just using new stigmine and visual stigmine which can increase the endogenous cycloline which can compete and can turn off the uh, these drugs from the receptor so the activity will immediately on no time will be uh, retained and so their uh, effect can be uh, reversed The second clinical use for anticholine steroids uh, is for treatment of Myasthenia gravis. Uh, and as I mentioned by the end of this lecture, we'll talk in details about this uh, disorder or this disease. And the drugs that used for treatment of Myasthenia gravis are bilirubin and nystigmine. And the excessive use of these drugs can cause cholinergic crisis. Also, we'll talk about this in by the end of the uh, lecture. The third clinical use for anticholine steroids is used for treatment of trachoma, as I mentioned, and we use uh, just uh, only the equisorbate as I drop. Last, anticholine steroids also can be used for treatment of Alzheimer's disease, especially the one that can cross a blood brain barrier, such as tacrin, donobazil, rivastigmine, and glantamine. Now we'll talk about uh, myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disease in which the immune system attack the nicotinic receptors. Ex uh, exactly the nicotinic receptors of muscle types, the NM type that occur uh, on the motor end plate on the uh, neuromuscular junction. And this will result in muscle weakness and increased fatigability because uh, uh, the patient will not uh, cannot provide or cannot uh, produce su sufficient uh, muscle contraction. So this can result in increased weakness of the uh, muscles and fatigability uh, due to the inability of the muscle to produce sustained uh, contraction due to the destruction. Destruction of the uh, of this type of receptor, nicotinic receptor, in any in M type of uh, receptors. Uh, my sick patient usually characterized by the dropping eyelids, dropping eyelids because uh, the eyelids muscles are uh, skeletal muscles in which you will find the nicotinic receptors uh, in M types, and due to the destruction, due to the blockage of these. receptors by the antibodies that are synthesized by the immune system due to the defect خلل في جهاز المناعة بيتخيل انه فقط this type of receptor in M type of receptor هي حاجة غريبة من الجسم فبيبدأ يعمل لها attack بيبدأ يهاجمها يعني بيصنع لها antibodies فبالتالي بيعمل لها blockage بيعمل لها بيعمل لها destruction فبالتالي حتقل في العدد بتاعه so that the result 
is a increase in muscle weakness and the fatigability of the uh, patient. Uh, the treatment of uh, mycena graphis is by use of anticoagulin sterase such as a neostigmine and albizostigmine and albiridostigmine. This is why, because to, enha to, in to enhance, to increase the uh, concentration of the endogenous acetylcholine, because the normal acetylcholine, although it is used, uh, it released in normal concentration, but it cannot produce sufficient contraction because it cannot cover and a sufficient number of receptors due to the destruction of the receptors by the immune system due to the this autoimmune uh, disease. So by increasing the levels of indigenous style choline, we can the, uh, the indigenous style choline uh, levels when increased when rise this will cover more uh, more uh, number of receptors and this can uh, can provide more contraction because more receptors are activated can be activated by the uh, styrocholine uh, that increase due to the to these uh, drugs also, uh, mycena graphis can be treated by immunosuppressant drugs, uh, drugs that can suppress the immune system, such as prednisolone and other uh, immunosuppressant drugs, uh, or can be uh, surgically by, uh, by thymectomy, the removal of the thymus gland, because the thymus gland can synthesize the T lymphocytes, which attack the foreign substances, and here uh, the body considers the in M type is a foreign uh, substance to attack by the immune system. Cymoctomy, removal of the thymus uh, gland. We have the a second disorder that usually associated uh, with the patient that having mycenegraphies is a cholinergic crisis. Cholinergic crisis, from the name, it increase in the cholinergic transmission. And this can occur due to the overdose, due to the overdose of an anticholine stress. So that usually the coronary crisis can be occurred in the patient that suffer from a mycena graphis. Mycena graphis treated by anticholine stress to, in, to enhance uh, the muscle, uh, to treat the muscle weakness. And usually the patient may involve an increase in the dose because the autoimmune disease usually progress, progressness, or progress, uh, progress uh, in the disease. So this sometimes involve the increase uh, in the dose. This increase in the dose can result in this condition, the cholinergic crisis, due to the increase. Uh, the cholinergic crisis is a condition that result, result from the large doses, the excessive doses of anticholine series, and characterized by various sympathetic effects, material increase with styrocholine acting on muscarinic receptors. So this can lead to various sympathetic effects, uh, various muscarinic effects, sorry, muscarinic effects, such as salivation, lacrimation, GIT cramps, poor vision, and with muscle weakness that result from the debolarizing block and we'll talk about the debolarizing blockage inshallah on the uh, next on on the coming lecture we'll talk in details about the debolarizing block debolarizing block occurred due to the excessive excessive concentration of styrocholine styrocholine first stimulate the receptors but the excess styrocholine can result in the borazing block the borazing block so that the weakness will persist the weakness here will persist in case of cholinergic crisis associated with muscarinic effects salivation lacrimation due to the excess of styrocholine that act on the other muscarinic uh, receptors uh, so if you remember we use an hydrophonium to diagnose the mycena graphis or actually to distinguish to distinguish between the cholinergic crisis and the mycena graphis and as i mentioned the cholinergic crisis and the mycena graphis usually can occur in the uh, mycenic patient because the mycenic patient uh, treated 
with the anticholine stress and the excess anticholine stress can result in cholinergy crisis. Both conditions, mycena graphis and cholinergy crisis are characterized by muscle weakness, muscle weakness and fatigability. The muscle weakness in the first disorder in the mycena graphis is result from insufficient contraction, insufficient activation of muscarinic receptor. While the muscle weakness that results in case of cholinergic crisis is okay due to the demoralizing blockage, overactivation, overactivation of the of these nicotinic uh, receptors. How to distinguish between these two conditions which occur in the same patient? This we can use an hydrophonium. And why hydrophonium? Because hydrophonium is of short duration of action, only less than three minutes or five minutes. If a patient suffers from mythenic weakness and we give this patient the hydrophonium, improvement will be okay because hydrophonium is anticholine stress and can increase the acetylcholine concentration so that acetylcholine concentration can improve the myphenic uh, weak, uh, myphenic weakness, uh, weakness that due to the action of acetylcholine on nicotinic receptors. But in case of the muscle weakness that results from overdose, that uh, results from a cholinergic crisis, and if we give a hydrophonium, Instead of improvement, worthiness will occur because hydrophonium is anticholine stress that lead to increase in acetylcholine. And the cholinergic crisis, the weakness that occur due to the cholinergic crisis is result from the deborizing blockage. So the hydrophonium will increase the deborizing blockage. So the muscle weakness here will be increased. So we can use hydrophonium to distinguish between the weakness that induced uh, uh, that occurred in case of mycena graphis or the weakness that result from the uh, cholinergic crisis. So hydrophonium is used to distinguish between this drug induced weakness, the cholinergic crisis, and the weakness of the mycena graphis. When giving hydrophonium, short acting and stress. if the weakness is drastically improved so the weakness is due to the myphenia graphis and here the physician uh, should increase the dose of anticholine stress uh, should be more uh, indicated if the dose 5 milligram may be needed to be increased to 7.5 milligram uh, if we give hydrophonium and the weakness is uh, getting worse so the weakness is here in this condition is due to the cholinergic crisis and the advice that the anticholine series dose should be reduced because this dose is resulting from uh, resulting in demoralizing blockage so the anticholine series here the dose should be uh, reduced last here we have this common side effects that result from cholinergic agonists, drugs that stimulate exa exactly the muscarinic uh, receptors. We will find uh, high potential can result sometimes, or, or although this is a minimum uh, or minor adverse effects and usually can be opposed by reflex uh, sympathetic activation. Also, bradycardia. Diarrhea due to the increase in the movement of the uh, GIT, increase the motility uh, of the GIT can result in the diarrhea. Uh, diaphoresis uh, due to the increase in the uh, uh, sweating, uh, sweating due because uh, sweet, uh, sweating. Uh, we have uh, muscarinic receptors, so this can result in increased uh, sweatings. Meiosis, as I mentioned, due to the contraction of the circular muscle uh, of the pupillae uh, constrictor iris muscles. Also, in the diarrhea increase in uh, urinary agency due to the uh, stimulation of the uh, or contraction of the dithrosal muscle of the bladder and uh, relaxing of the sphincter, bladder sphincter. Also, uh, uh, abdominal pain can result from the contraction of the visceral uh, small 
muscle. Uh, I think that is all regarding the cholinergic agonist. Uh, thank you. Inshallah, see you or you inshallah you will listen to me uh, on the coming uh, lecture. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.